from Joe Rogan's excitement over the featherweight title challenger to Dana White's announcement about the cancellation of a highly anticipated brawl. Here are the celebs and pros predictions for UFC 290. Starting off with the featherweight champ facing the interim champ, Alexander Volkanovsky against Yair Rodriguez. A fight that has the fans excited and for a good reason. Volkanovski has hyped up his Mexican opponent, acknowledging that Rodriguez could be one of the most dangerous fighters he's ever faced. He's not the only one singing Rodriguez's praises. Joe Rogan couldn't contain his excitement when the UFC 290 card was revealed, dedicating a solid four minutes on his podcast to discuss Rodriguez's incredible skill set. During a recent episode of the Joe Rogan Experience, the UFC commentator watched a series of mind-blowing highlights from Rodriguez's career. From the wild finishes of Andre Feely to names like BJ Penn and Chan Sung Jung, El Pantera has left a trail of jaw-dropping moments in the octagon. Rogan couldn't help but express his admiration, labeling Rodriguez as one of the wildest and most unpredictable fighters in MMA. With a taekwondo background, Rogan claimed that Rodriguez brings a level of creativity and uniqueness that sets him apart. While Rogan and Volkanovski share the sentiment that Rodriguez is an incredibly dynamic fighter, the UFC commentator still sees him having a tough challenge against the reigning featherweight champion. In Rogan's eyes, Volkanovski is the baddest guy alive and pound for pound number one. Even though Volkanovski is coming off a loss to Islam, Rogan believed that he had almost edged him. And at 145, he's just unprecedented. It seems like the majority of fans, including Rogan, are eagerly awaiting this epic showdown between two exceptional fighters. With such high stakes, Rogan is probably having difficulty predicting the outcome. But several UFC pros have had their say on the fight. MMA math-wise, Volk destroys Yair. But then again, there's no MMA math. Fighting Yair Rodriguez is a tricky task for anyone, but it becomes even more challenging for someone shorter and occasionally susceptible to strikes like Volk. It's no wonder that Henry Cejudo predicts this to be the most brutal fight of Volkanovski's career, believing that Yair has what it takes to defeat him. Though he claimed that for Yair to come out on top, he needs to keep Volk at a distance and be more strategic with his kicks, utilizing his length advantage. Going the full five rounds won't be enough since Volk is known for his incredible gas tank. Arnold Allen, on the other hand, isn't as confident in Yair's chances. While he acknowledges Yair's explosiveness, slick submissions, and dangerous elbows, he finds it tough to bet against Volkanovski. Allen knows Volkanovski well and expects him to outwork Yair, shutting him down and neutralizing his offense. The opinions of Cejudo and Allen reflect the uncertainty surrounding this compelling matchup. But that's not the only compelling matchup we have. The reigning flyweight champion, Brandon Moreno, is gearing up for his next title defense. Guess who's standing in his way? It's none other than his former foe, Alexandra Pandoha. These two have crossed paths before, with one fight during a season of The Ultimate Fighter and another in an official bout. Pandoha came out on top in both encounters, but things have changed since then, and Moreno has transformed into a different beast altogether. Moreno has been on a rampage, clearing out the top contenders in the division, leaving only Pandoha as the remaining obstacle. UFC lightweight Anthony Smith acknowledges the importance of Pandoha's 2-0 record against Moreno, suggesting that it might ignite a fire within Moreno to come back even stronger. Smith also points out that Pandoha possesses that intangible X factor. Even though Moreno has made tremendous improvements in his grappling and striking, keeping his opponents guessing. But in this particular matchup, Moreno's inability to go for takedowns against Pandoha leaves him somewhat one-dimensional, opening the door for a potential upset by Pandoha. On the other side of the spectrum, UFC bantamweight Cody Stamen wasted no time in choosing Moreno without any hesitation. He believes that Moreno is just an incredibly tough nut to crack right now, constantly evolving and improving with every fight. Overall, we could say that the predictions of the MMA pros in this fight are just as divided. But that's not really the case in Robert Whittaker against Drikus Doplessi. Dana White confirmed that the victor would go on to face Israel Adesanya for the championship. It's a surprising turn of events, as many anticipated Doplessi to be Adesanya's next challenger.
the two fighters have been engaging in a public feud over their African heritage, adding an extra layer of intrigue to the mix. This decision by the UFC has raised concerns among fans and professionals alike, including the outspoken retired UFC star Chael Sonnen. Sonnen didn't hold back in expressing his surprise, labeling Do Plessy as an underdog without hesitation. He questioned the matchmaking choices, suggesting that a Du Plessis versus Adesanya showdown would have been the more logical route. Sonnen revealed that Adesanya himself has made it clear that he won't fight anyone else until he faces Do Plessis. Now, Adesanya's statement doesn't imply he believes Du Plessis will defeat Robert Whittaker in their upcoming bout. Adesanya's focus is unwavering, regardless of Whitaker's outcome. He's determined to face Du Plessis, even if it means fighting him after a loss or a humbling knockout defeat. While many in the MMA community expect Whitaker to emerge victorious in this fight, given his dominant performances against other opponents, Sonnen sees it as a significant mismatch in skill. Whitaker has steamrolled through his competition, leaving no doubt in the minds of fans and experts that he is the superior fighter. With the stage set for an intriguing clash between Whitaker and Du Plessis, the narrative surrounding this matchup is filled with Whitaker taking an easy win. But before all of this, we might see a familiar face leave the stage. UFC President Dana White dropped a bombshell, announcing that seasoned veteran Robbie Lawler will be hanging up his gloves after his upcoming fight against Nico Price at UFC 290. But that's not all. Lawler will also be honored with an induction into the prestigious UFC Hall of Fame, adding to his remarkable legacy. Robbie has been in the game for what feels like forever, dating back to the days when the PlayStation 2 was the hot new console on the block. He's undeniably one of the most thrilling welterweights to ever step foot inside the octagon. But let's just say the UFC has faced some major backlash for a surprising decision regarding the placement of the fight. To the surprise of many, the former welterweight champion finds himself in the prelims instead of the expected main card slot. Can you believe it? This marks the first time since his debut in 2002 that Lawler will be starting off in the prelims. It's a decision that has left fans scratching their heads and voicing their discontent. It's not the only thing that has frustrated fans regarding UFC 290 as UFC 290 is still without a fan favorite clash. The anticipation was building up among fans for the potential clash between Manel Cape and Davison Figueiredo this summer. There were some mixed signals regarding the fight's status, as a previous report indicated Figueiredo's removal from UFC 290 on July 8th. To make it worse, the recent mismanagement by the UFC still included the bout in the lineup, leaving fans hopeful. But UFC President Dana White had some news that might disappoint many. During a press conference, when questioned about the confusion surrounding the fight, White revealed that the matchup is not happening and may never happen, citing Figueiredo's desire to move up to bantamweight. White appeared a bit puzzled initially, unsure of the fight's status, but then confirmed that it is, in fact, not taking place. He responded with a mix of frustration and amusement, saying, That's a fucking great question. During the press conference, Dana White dove into the details, talking about how the discussions for the Figueiredo vs. Cape fight went back and forth. At first, it seemed like the fight was on, but then Figueiredo told someone else it wasn't happening. Just when White thought it was back on, Figueiredo dropped the bombshell that he's moving up in weight. It's a total head-scratcher. The Figueiredo vs. Cape matchup would have been a big deal for the flyweight division. It would have added even more excitement to the already stacked UFC 290 card, which is already boasting two title fights in the main and co-main events. Sadly, it looks like fans will have to hold off on their hopes for this fight, at least for now. So, from Dana White's announcement about the cancellation of a highly anticipated brawl, to Joe Rogan's infectious excitement over the featherweight title challenger, here were the predictions surrounding the UFC 290 card. 